everybody. Welcome to KookCenter.com's YouTube channel. My name is Jeff Newsom. I'm one of the managers here at the site. And you may have noticed that SB Nation has had a little bit of an emphasis recently on video through their YouTube channel. This is KookCenter.com's uh, contribution to that effort. Today we're going to take a look at a play here, the fourth and one, where uh, Taysom Hill throws a touchdown for BYU uh, to give the Cougars, the Blue Cougars, a two-touchdown lead. Um, some days we'll do this, other days we might just add a short commentary, some days we might do a full-length feature, but hopefully you'll take a chance and subscribe up above here to the KoogCenter.com YouTube channel um, and check out all of our videos that come across. With that, let's take a look at this play. BYU comes out with Taysom Hill as a quarterback. That's different than Riley Nelson, obviously. Uh, they got three wide receivers and the person who's actually their fullback. You look at WSU's defensive alignment. They got four guys with their hands on the ground, three linebackers, corner, corner. What you don't see is there are actually two safeties. Now, the first thing to breaking down any defensive play is figure out how many safeties there are and what their coverage responsibility was. It doesn't take much to figure out. Somebody's got to cover this guy because you got this guy covered, you got that guy covered. Nobody's really out here. What we don't know is, is the linebacker going to drop or is the safety going to come up to cover that guy? And so... What we're kind of looking for is this. Now, here's the thing that we're thinking of. First thing, look at who the quarterback is. Not Riley Nelson. It's Taysom Hill, the freshman. Now, what do we know about him? And what does WSU, more importantly, know about him? He's a runner. He's been called Tim Tebow light. He's that kind of a guy. And they often bring him in in short yarded situations to try and get that last yard. So what we've got here is a situation where WSU already is looking, okay, they got seven guys in the box. They got two safeties. This guy makes it so they can't really play eight in the box unless the Cougars want to go cover zero, which means no deep safety. That's not a coverage that most teams want to do. And so WSU is left with, okay, how do we handle this? Do we try to take away these three receivers in case he passes? They already know that his preference, usually the way he's used is to run, and so they're kind of trying to process and think of all of these three things. So with that, with that alignment, let's go ahead and roll the tape and figure out what happens after the snap. All right, now the first thing you'll notice is Hill beckons the wide receiver at the top into motion. Let's go ahead and freeze it right here at the fake handoff. All right, a couple things WCU has done to kind of tip their hand as to their coverage. Horton has come down the line following that wide receiver, uh, suggesting to Hill that the Cougars are a man-to-man -man coverage. We also have Taylor Talulu coming down on that slot guy I pointed out earlier, covering him. So what we've got is man-to-man -man on the three wide receivers and one deep safety, Dayon Buchanan who's not in the screen, you can't see him, okay? Now, the other thing we got going on, take a look at the BYU line. They're not really crashing down and hard run blocking, but they're also not really setting up in pure pass protection either. They almost look like really what they're trying to do is go ahead and seal the right side of that line, which makes sense. If you look at number five, the running back, he has kind of taken a step to the left and then crashed hard to the right, suggesting a sort of dive run with Hill. Now, we talked earlier about how WSU knew he was a run threat, okay? So if you look at this whole thing, really kind of what it looks like is it looks like a run all the way. they got the fly sweep motion, they've got the lead blocker, and then Hill is going to go ahead and sprint out to his right here in a second that you'll see, okay? So what this does is this does a couple things. One is Chester Sua there, number 45, the linebacker, he's kind of left in no man's land. He knows the scouting report on Hill. He knows that Hill is a runner, so he's looking at all this action in front of him and thinking, okay, I'm, I'm guessing anyway, thinking, okay, this looks like a run. You got a lead blocker, you got a fake fly sweep, you know, he's coming my way downhill trying to pick up that yard. Remember, it's fourth and one, okay? The other thing we've got going here, and this is where I think the play starts to break down. If you look down at the bottom, Simmons is now sneaking into the backfield. He's letting his wide receiver go. We don't know really at this point why that is. We don't know if he's cheating, buying into the fly sweep, or if it's his assignment, if he sees the fly sweep to let the guy go and Buchanan rolls over onto his guy. We just don't know. And so, but what that does is we know that he's now out of the coverage equation, which means Dayon Buchanan has to roll over and cover his guy. Only one problem with that. You look at the top of the screen, the tight end is leaking out already. So essentially what you've got is you've got one deep safety to cover two guys. And that, of course, creates a disaster. So let's go ahead and roll this in slow motion. You'll go ahead and see, again, Simmons is in the backfield, wide receiver running free, tight end running free. Sua, he's got eyes on the quarterback the whole way. Horton is following the wide receiver. Now what you see here for WSU is you've got 
actually Travis Long busts through, makes a nice play. He breaks through that seal. Okay, so the running back there who's coming in to lead block, he's got his eyes on Sua, so he's going to take him out of the play. He goes ahead and does that, but Hill, of course, has his eyes downfield, notices that the tight end has leaked, and you can go ahead and run it in full speed now. He throws it to a wide-open guy, touchdown. Taliulu's kind of with his hands in the air, wondering what happened. Buchanan with his hands in, you know, on his hips, wondering what happened, and it's an easy touchdown. All right, now ESPN does a favor later in the broadcast by showing us an overhead view. You're going to see a lot of things we talked about before, but one thing that's confirmed for us is if you look at Buchanan, he is a single high safety about 15 yards downfield, just as we suspected before. But as ESPN rolls it forward, here's what they're going to do. They're going to show you how the running back seals off Chester Sua, creates this lane around the right-hand side. But what I want you to do is I want you to watch Buchanan and see what he does. Remember we talked about how Simmons was sneaking a peek in the backfield, okay? And how he went across the line of scrimmage in an effort, presumably, to try and stop that fly sweep action. We speculated that we didn't know whether he was doing it on his own or whether that was part of the, of the scheme. Well, as this rolls forward, go ahead and watch Buchanan. See, how, see what he does in relation to the wide receiver coming across the line of uh, the formation. So go ahead and roll it. Now go ahead and pause it. Okay, so they're highlighting Sua there. Buchanan, you can see, has already started streaking to the right. So what this tells me, or at least what I would guess is, Buchanan's responsibility was to pick up that wide receiver on the, on the wide side if they used that fly sweep motion. And that Simmons was not freelancing to going in there to stop that, that he was actually acting as part of the scheme. Now, the problem that creates, of course, is that leaves a linebacker responsible for that tight end. And Sua, keying in on the run as we talked about before, um, isn't prepared for that. So go ahead and roll it with ESPN's thing here. They're going to show the running back who's going to come get the seal. Okay, tight end, running free. Simmons is trying to recover down there at the bottom, but it really doesn't matter because Buchanan's already taken out of the play, and the tight end is wide open at the top for the touchdown. Fans really always want to look for somebody to blame. They want to figure out who was at fault, who screwed up, or whatever. And, you know, if we go from what's going on in the video there, you know, you probably would say, okay, Sue is at fault. But let's be honest here. He was in a no-win situation. He was sort of caught in no man's land from trying to decide, do I stop the running quarterback who my scouting report tells me is going to run, or do I run with that tight end? And if he goes with the tight end to try and stop the touchdown, he ends up giving up the first down. Remember, it's fourth and one. He's keyed up on trying to stop that first down. I think what you really have to do here is just give BYU credit and give them credit where credit's due and that this is just a really well-designed play for that situation. They put Sue in a, in a position where he had to make a decision. He made the wrong one for the touchdown. You know, if he if he makes the right one to stop the touchdown, runs at the tight end, they, they very likely get the first down, which, you know, he really could have run for the first down anyway. All he had to do was turn the corner on Travis Long, which it looked like he was about to do before he threw the ball. They were going to get the first down anyway. You know, who knows? Maybe they don't get a touchdown. But maybe they do. I think what you really have to do is just sort of tip your hat to BYU for a really well-designed play. And that's how it happens. For SB Nation and CougCenter.com, I'm Jeff Neusser.